guys. So I purchased these gators a while ago, and they're just too small. They do. I do know they shut. There you go. See, nightmare. I've been trying for like ten minutes. I've put them on because there's this a little bit of there's half a mile of a bit of mushiness, and then it's just all gradual, easy peasy on grass. So, a very easy walk, it's just one mile, very gradual, the elevation is 200 metres, I'm parked up very high, I'm parked up about 600 metres high, oh my god, I'm not going to name where I am, I'm going to let you guess it, and what I'm having to do though is park the car, drop my bag off, where the path starts and park my car further up and walk 0.3 of a mile just to save myself carrying that weight um and yeah tomorrow morning just dump it pick it up again so catch us in a bit hey guys so i've parked <laughs> sean's coming <laughs> nearly forgot him he felt kind of guilty about last night which was my uh, glen coast key slope um video previous video probably it's just a zero point two mile five five minute walk less three minutes uh, the car is that there is not enough space next to the where you get off to go up so I had to drop my gear off drive up and then when I come back tomorrow I'll dump it again and pick it up this is where I would have parked and these hikers have stolen it off of me my rucksack is just there where I've come from and that's where we're heading it's not that far that's just 10 minutes away and that is why we wear Altbergs and Gators at this stage you wish you could have hopped, hopped in that you know <sighs> just this to go what an achievement I made it. <sighs> that was that was tough. That that was tough. <laughs> number I don't know. What number are we? Who knows? <sighs> I don't care anymore. This better be the true summit. Or is that the true summit? I don't know. How can you lose? How how can you lose your 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 tent bag? How? Look at that! Beautiful. We do a little pan. so it can't have gone far the only alternative I can think is that I put the tent on top of it which you'll probably have seen in the footage so in the morning when I pack up it should be there that's what people think that's the lot of the dam I've found a really big wide angle set on my phone it's not quite that wide so I'm pitched guys the truth is my body is physically shattered I've not done anything like that for a while the good news is, no knee pain, a little bit of a 3 out of 10 pain Achilles the last 
a quarter of a mile. It's eased off now. Feels good. Just kind of felt a bit like it feels at the end of a three mile walk. And yeah, um, I'm. See how I feel in the morning. That's the challenge to see today. And then if I'm great in the morning, then that's that's progress. So yeah, see these clouds. These clouds are going to come down overnight and invert about 12 a.m. Hopefully I should be above clouds. I'm hoping I'm high enough to actually be above it and not in it. Um, really, really hoping so. So, fingers crossed. If not, I'm in a cloud all night and morning. <laughs> but uh, I was supposed to try, you know? But yeah, so I'm going to make most of the views for now. Set the drone up just in case I don't get views in the morning. And I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, guys, I don't think this video is going to be as, like, amazing as my other ones. The drone footage will be good, but... I'm not going to do so much talking, I mean I did a lot already, I just want to kind of chill out and relax and enjoy this because it's going to be a while till I get up any hills again, probably two months so just put that out there but you will probably see another like 10-15 minutes worth of footage don't worry, I'm vlogging I'm just not going to make it as good a standard as I usually would uh, I'm certainly not filming myself having my tea and all that you can see the clouds dropping. It's now, I'd say it's about a thousand metres. So Ben Lord's is 1,200 and something. Don't know what that is. And it's probably at a thousand metres. The base, so it's dropped quite rapidly in the last half hour. So I hope, I'm almost at 800 metres. I hope I'll be just above it in the morning. Let's see. The idea is to also have a starry night after 12 pm above the clouds. That's what the forecast is, so let's see. Gonna be arsed standing you up, so I'm filming myself with a GoPro taking these off. These were much needed, guys. <laughs> much needed. Came up to here at some point. No. That's a trick right there. <sighs> it's not too thick. So, if that base drops to 500 metres, or even 400, hopefully I get. I'm almost 800, so. How do I feel? Scale of one to 10. Nine, eight, physical wise. How high am I? Above 700 meters. I parked at about 650, no, 550. So about 760, something like that. I'll put it here. I, I can't remember. I think I parked about 560 or 580 meters. And I've got no pain now. It's that little ache I had for the last 20 minutes or so. 25 probably, to be honest with you. Yeah, 25, 20 minutes. It's gone. Uh, I think I got away with that, really. <laughs> um, no, I need, I need to, I need to start somewhere. This was one mile, 200 meters, but the difficult thing about it was, well, the advantage to me was it's soft ground, but the difficult bit was that it was quite boggy and hard. Well, my fitness isn't there for carrying a rucksack anymore. I mean, that I, I think I would have, at least I now know that I can pretty much maybe go a hill walk like this with no rucksack on my back, maybe every two weeks or so, and be, you know, absolutely fine. I mean, I did something, a bit higher than this in um, three to four weeks ago and I was fine just three miles it was and this is a mile and I was a bit sore for the last half hour for the last half mile but I was fine a few days after I was fine I had no pain a day after so yeah so I'll tell you what we're looking at on the GoPro because my phone's charging so sorry if it's so small guys that is um something Antulachin. Anyway, I'll put the real name for it. I was one of my top, in my top 50. Monroe's, I did it in winter conditions. The, this is the Ben Lord range, all of them. I did these two separately and then I did the other ridge. I did Ben Lord separately and then I did the three separately. I wasn't so fit back then, as fit as I was towards, you know, the middle point of my Monroe's. And over here, forgot what they're called but I did those in winter conditions with a cloud inversion I remember not being so experienced with cloud inversions and the cloud was chasing me and I was worried but I just managed to get down in time I wasn't so good with navigation back then by the way 
tomorrow morning is going to be a very interesting descent in the clack. There's going to be no visibility. I've got my compass. Uh, so I should be fine. And my phone. I pretty much have to go... Uh, that's east, that's north. South. Southeast. And if as long as I go southeast, I should end up at the road. Uh, and the descent's pretty much the same the whole time. It's steeper at some part, so I did... I might end up going down a bit steeper terrain. You know, just by chance, but it's not terrible. Yeah, so the road is... It's... Uh, I'll be going in a southeasterly direction down the hill, so yeah, I'll be fine. Southeast to start with. Which is half a mile to that car over there. And then when I get there, and if I don't get there, after 25 minutes, I'll start to head um, south anyway. So then I'll line up my north again. And I'll start walking south. This arrow is telling me when I'm walking, so that's south. That's north facing me. So that's the plan for tomorrow morning. Head southeast for 25 minutes, roughly, till I get down to that little Buddha. I might not see it because whatever. And then start going south, which is. Yeah, uh, then we've got um, <sighs> Ah, that's hard What would that be? Would that be Ben Alder? Lot I always get Avon and Alder mixed up I think Avon is in the Cairngorms And Alder is in the West of the Cairngorms <laughs> I think that lot's all over there. are. And then, these are Corbett. And then you're looking into Glen Cove that way. And then you're looking into Crane Lanark Monroe's that way. And then you'll be looking towards Ben Chonsey that way. I'm not gonna name them all, can't be arsed. Oh, and cheese and tomato. Uh, look how smart I am. I'm so organised. <laughs> I'm gonna open that. with an alarm set for 1am I've had 4 hours sleep I'll probably get in about 10 hours which I need because the night before I got only 5 um, and yeah it's clear all the stars are out I've been doing a bit of stargazing but to be honest with you I'm quite tired and there ain't no shit stars happening or anything, so I think I'm gonna go back to sleep. Uh, I can't really check to see if there's any aurora because I've got no internet, so that's fine. I don't think there is, though. I haven't seen it, 
just recently really so morning guys so it's 6am the forecast was wrong which fine uh we're still gonna have a beautiful sunrise at least it's clear at least i'm on a hill the first time in ages solo and you know what well i hope those clouds are not coming this way <laughs> but um yeah all all the then lures and that are shrouded with cloud i mean yeah perhaps that is the inversion but it only reaches ben lures but they seem to be in it, so at least I'm not in it. I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm... I'm gonna check the direction of the wind and hope that that's not coming this way. Because <laughs> I want my views this morning. But yeah, it's, it's stunning morning. Stunning morning. <laughs> Hello guys, so I've just been sat looking at those clouds with the trees for the last um, <laughs> five minutes. Been getting some lovely shots, it's just stunning down there. Absolutely amazing. Huh. Yep. I can kind of now see where I think I can see where I did the split <laughs> with my drone, my second time flying it, my drone. <laughs>
um, flying away over there where those trees were. I believe that's where it was. Somewhere around there, it might not be that exact spot. But yeah, <laughs> that was, that was, uh, that was coming to two and a half years ago now. I think I was probably within my first 20 Munros. So oh, that's crazy that, isn't it? Hey guys, so I thought I'd, why, why, no why not, for those of you who are new to my channel, I'll do a little kind of, a mini tent review on the Black Label Solo. And the Red Label Solo is also very similar in the build. It's just the difference is that the materials in my Black Label are a lot stronger. Um, the clips are different, they're stronger. The poles are heavier and stronger um, and there's definitely a big difference because Solo Summiteer has the red label and he used this, just once borrowed it from me and says the big difference in noise, very quiet. Because I always used to wonder why I would say his solo was noisy because mine is completely silent. So I tend to take this tent up even just when I want a good night's sleep. Um, I've got the Acto but it's really flappy. Each tent has its own purpose, so it's about this tent today. What I like is that the there's two zip sides, so see how much open space I have? And I can sit straight. That's what I like. The door, my eye level is below the level of the door here, which is nice. And this has an inner mesh that zips all the way down. I quite like that too because if there's midges you can still see fully out the door. Um, I don't, no, the other one doesn't have that, but you don't really need that in that one. Um, yeah, the main difference is... Well, oh shit, let's get that. <laughs> oh no, I made a mess. No! That better dry. Now I've got a wet footprint. See what happens when you're not focusing. Um, yeah. So the difference is, well, you can use it without an inner, and the red sole you can do that too. Um, as long as there's no midge. And you can actually fit two people in with two rucksacks quite well. You have to have feet to head though, so the two mats fit fine, but head, head. I have done it head, head, but if you do it head, head, one person gets hit in the face by the outer a little bit. <laughs> Otherwise you're all good. So that's one way. So taking the inner away makes it about 1.6 kilograms. It's already a 2.8 kilogram tent. So it makes it a hell lot lighter as well, so it's good. Even just for yourself, it's much more spacious like that. Now if you don't, if you're fussy with creepy crawlies then you need the inner obviously. Um, I bought the footprint with it, it didn't come with it and I'm glad I did because that allows me to do that. Um, otherwise I wouldn't have to do that unless I've carried a blanket or whatever. Uh, what else? There's two pockets in the inner vestibule. In the, uh, there is these little toggles all the way down where you can hang a line to dry clothes which I don't think the black, the red label, label has, sorry as good as that you've got an air vent up here these zips also zip down the way so you can peel down I'm not going to take that off right now this flap can come off if you want it to um, which means if you were to, if it wasn't going to rain one night and you were to zip these down you'd have more of a star view, almost like an open screen above you, half of it really. So yeah, black label solo and they, it comes with different pegs I think too, stronger pegs. The Not the V ones, the other ones, if you know what I mean, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah. 10mm pools, black, strong guy lines, not much else really to say, probably a lot more I could say but yeah one major thing I've never been I've never been asked to do but I want to do because it annoyed me last night and I always say every time I go out but I never do it 
is to replace the zips with probably with what's in my pocket i'll use this fabric it's part it's actually i brought it with me in case a guy would something would break and i would love i have a repair kit i'd probably use this to be honest and just cut bits of it i don't know i think it's too thick though it might work and like instead because during the night when the wind makes that noise all the time so it's very annoying and it makes it a little bit lighter of course as well but not much significantly but yeah Someone's refusing to get out of bed. Aren't you, Sean? Hey. Hmm. Scottish bog that <laughs> guys it's so hot honestly it must be 25 26 it's like boasting I'm almost at the road now I'd say I'm about 10 minutes so I'm just gonna get on with it <sighs> made it back to the road now I'm gonna do the last little bit on foot dumped my bag down there so guys I'm gonna sign out here I might show you my cold water dip and my food after this before I go completely. Look, meh. 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 You're not coos, you're sheep. Aye. Bit side distracted. You know what I'm like with my Sean's. Aye, guys. Anyway, um, I look forward to hearing what you've got to say, comments, all that jazz. Please make a big thumbs up and like. Share this video to people you know that might be interested, please. That really helps the channel a lot. And it helps the videos get through to people that might really benefit from them as well. And subscribe, of course. And I'll see you wherever the next one is. Probably be local in Dumfrieshire. Ciao! And this is the spot. You can see why it would be mobbed. There's a fire pit right there. It's been two years since I've been here. There's a current here. That's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Quick video guys, before someone comes. I just had a bit of an emotional moment. I have been crying. Uh, it's because like someone's passing. Um. I'll get back to in a sec. Yeah, so, um, I just realised how much progress I've made. It's been 17 months. Guys, it's been seven months out of the 17 months I was stuck at not being able to surpass 1.6 miles of a flat walk without being in pain at, without the pain starting at about 1.5 miles. Um, someone I really need to thank a lot. I've paid so many professionals up to this date and what's worked the best is acupuncture and I want to thank the wellness clinic in Dumfries. Had about 12 courses twice a week. Over the last six weeks I've had two weeks off of it so far 
six weeks ago I couldn't walk 1.6 miles. Now in this time too, I stopped doing rehab in isolation and started doing rehab. Let me get this one arm, hang on. I have to use the other arm because my arm's falling off. So I started doing, uh, so for my three injuries all combined, I started doing stability rehab, but using my whole body, so full body movement. Um, and lots of like yoga stance stuff every morning, ankle, simple ankle ballet strength exercises and when I'm lying in my bed in the morning. <sighs> so I wasn't actually isolating in rehab. And you know, it's helped. Any of the physiotherapy stuff hasn't, but this has. And I want to also thank Richard for highlighting that to me. The main thing for me was losing, I didn't realise I'd, lo I mean, I'm, I've got lots of stability still, like, um, uh, my arm keeps shaking. So, um, I've got stability more than anyone else, not anyone else, sorry, like, more than most people still. But for the imbalances in my body, I needed more and flexibility and stuff, just needed to work on the stability most. And thanks, Richard, even though I knew this, for giving me a boost up the ass for doing it every day. Because I used to do it two or three times a week, but that wasn't enough. And for telling me that the rehab was pointless. Because um, no other person has said, everyone I've paid told me to do the rehab. But since I've stopped, done the acupuncture, two weeks after having stopped the acupuncture now, I managed two, and last two or three weeks I've managed to walk three miles with no pain. A few times, two or three times. I did a little hill over three miles that was 250 metres of ascent. And yeah, over the last two days, I took a bit of a risk and just went for it. I did my Glencoe Ski Slope Camp and then I challenged myself a bit with a rucksack. So it was one mile up, gradual ascent. My knee was pain free. My Achilles was a bit sore the last 20 minutes. Coming down the day after I had no pain. Uh, first time in two years that I've been able to do a 250 metre ascent with a rucksack on my back. Slight lie there, I had had a hydro dissection and I did manage one hill, but yeah, um, that was partly because it was masking the pain uh, and really was not ready for that. So I've done it one other time in the space of um, 17 months and that was one of my winter summit camps um, a few videos back. Yeah, but this time it's done properly um, with no masking of pain. Proper rehab, no ibuprofen and proper advice. With no pain. And I just want to thank, sorry about all the random people, but <laughs> I just, <laughs> just want to thank um, Linda. Hi! Uh, I just felt a bum in you. Thanks. <laughs> You'll be on YouTube now. <laughs> um, Linda and Richard for being the best professionals with the best advice so far in the last two years. So thank you. You've helped my mental health so much and it puts tears to my eyes. So bless. And I've got no pain. I came down the hill this morning, took me 45 minutes to get down. It is pathless, rough terrain, and I've just walked three miles on a flat with no pain. Uh, it doesn't, I'm not getting ahead of myself. I am still very cautious, but <laughs> compared to six weeks, if that progress in six weeks, if I'd known that, I could have done that several months ago and I would have been better by now. So thank you, I've clearly been wasting my time with everyone else's advice. I'm not saying their advice was wrong, because I do know that tendinosis work differently for everyone, so I finally found what works for me. So I do thank those who did try and help me, I do know research shows it's correct, but for me, it didn't work, so. Unfortunately, one of the sets of rehab caused my quadricep tendon to flare up as tendinosis. Um, so that was a bit of an unexpected thing. So that's one of the reasons why the knee started. Most thanks to you guys that have finally introduced me to what I should have really been doing. So thank you. And thank you to everyone helping me, whoever's helping me. And I'll leave it at that. Ciao. Thank mm -hmm. you.